Hi, this is James from the Hornbill support team and this is a short video to show you how to set up a self-service portal from scratch and also just a short discussion on um, what things you should include in your first version of self-service. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually set up a new self-service portal. Um, so from the client here, I'm using 7.5.0. Um, doesn't matter which particular version you're using, this will apply to all. Um, from the administration menu I'm going to go down to manage self-service configurations. Now this is a very important part to it because this will uh, determine what URL your customer base will be going to uh, when they access self-service. Um, so I'm going to click on new. Uh, for this instance I'm just going to type uh, test2 and the options here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select as a create a copy of the current one. Uh, this will mean all the files within the current self-service out of the box is going to appear in my new instance. So this will take a second. There we go. Um, so just to prove that that's actually currently working, uh, I'm just going to go to that link so again it'll be server name slash sw slash what you've set up so it was test2 as you can see that's working so uh, first things within here that you'll need to uh, configure um, first things we'll go top to bottom here um, session timeout um, it will take 50 minutes of inactivity before your session will time out and I'll ask you to re-log in again. Um, it's 50 minutes by default but you can set this to anything you like. Um, website settings, um, data dictionary, this is really important because uh, if you're using ITSMF or ITSM um, or even if you've done a migration between the two you'll need to make sure this is correct because um, when you view your calls on self-service through my requests um, this will filter to this particular data dictionary so if in the past um, if you've always been on ITSM and uh, you've logged calls in SupportWorks it will use the app code of ITSM against the call itself so uh, it's also important is if you have two different data dictionaries, let's say a HR data dictionary and also an ITSM. Uh, you may not want to view calls from the ITSM within the HR, so this selection is really important. Um, company na name and information here, I've gone over this in a separate uh, tutorial, uh, but again it's important um, that you set this up, you don't want to give the wrong information to your customer base. That sort of information. Um, log call settings. Um, this this will be for when uh, your customer base goes to request support on the uh, self-service portal. Um, so you can choose any call class you like. I think 99% of our customer base currently will choose an incident. Usually, uh, when you request support, you want to fill out a very quick form and say, "I've got a problem. Um, I want to." log an incident, so yep, uh, usually that's incident. Uh, a group that you assign this to, I think most of our uh, customer base again will assign this to their support team or first line team, uh, but you can obviously select any support you like, uh, any level of uh, group as well, and also if you want to, to a particular analyst. Um, you have a selection of priority, whether you wish to use the actual customer who's logging the calls uh, default priority, so obviously that's set within the customer properties, or if you were to set a particular level, um, usually this would be uh, something that's low because if it was a higher priority you'd expect them to log a call for your, for your phone call. Um, you also have settings here in terms of how many levels of profile you wish for them to choose, um, and it will be mandatory. So if if you do select two and your customer when logging the call uh, only selects one it will remind them say please select two levels of profile I, th I think this can be really handy uh, to narrow down where the issue is if they ha haven't been particularly descriptive in their uh, summary or description when they log the call status uh, this is really important you've got two selections here uh, incoming and logged incoming will allow you to actually select the SLA after the call's been logged so it will come through to your list as an incoming status it will first of all ask you which call class you wish to select um, and also ask you to select a SLA so the SLA timers wouldn't have actually started until after it's gone through the incoming status 
logged will automatically log the call using the settings above, so using the incident and low, and as soon as it comes through the timer starts. So I'm going to keep it to logged for this uh, particular instance. Other settings, um, this is uh, just for information, the greeting on the on the first page after you log in it will say hi hi James or um, you can, I think it says full name as well. So um, I think by default it's first name. Shared mailbox, this is important because um, if you, after the call is logged it will send an email to the end user or the customer to say your call has been logged, this is your reference number um, so obviously you want to set this correctly in terms of if you have several different shared mailboxes I'll go back to the instance in terms of um, the ITSM and HR HR might have a separate shared mailbox um, these three tick boxes are around the uh, so the first one is show hot or known issues um, known issues and uh, hot issues were used in the old ITHD template um, and it used to show it's, it's similar to the um, known errors in the ITSM uh, application in terms of uh, if there's been a problem and uh, it's going to affect many many people um, so it's a bit like a major instance and well in, in, the, in the way that it will show you what current outstanding major instance are currently occurring um, but this is more specific for ITHD um, Enable knowledge base. Um, the knowledge base uh, section on the left-hand navigation pane on the self-service uh, won't show unless this is ticked. Uh, force KB search is after they try to log a call through the request support area. Um, it will automatically try and push them through the knowledge base first to check whether there is a any kind of fix before actually logging the call. I think that's quite important because um, I know with uh, IDBS and Adam Payton, um, if you if you can uh, resolve calls before they actually get to you then that can save so much time from your analyst point of view um, so you can keep that ticked. Access control is more around the how your customer base is actually going to log on to the uh, portal. A lot of these settings you wouldn't necessarily change um, except from the ID field possibly. Um, in your customer record uh, your main uh, primary key of the uh, customer properties is key search. Usually this would be your username or AD username. Uh, however if it's not obviously you can select one of the other fields in here. Uh, another alternative is to use the AD logon field. Um, so if you do um, LDAP imports for directly from your AD and key search isn't being used as your AD username you can use AD login. Uh, but for now I'm going to set this back to key search. So that's all the main the main settings. Um, so once I close that, and as you can see here, that it allows us to log in, and all of our settings are in place. Um, so now once you've you've got this you've got this far, and uh, obviously there's other tutorials in terms of how to change the logos, how to change the default text, and also how to log on using the uh, AD username and password. Um, so you may wish to view them first, but um, other things you might want to think of here is how the call is actually logged. So in terms of the request support, as you can see here, it's trying to force you through the knowledge base because we've enabled that selection. And uh, once you go through it, here you get a particular form. One of the questions we're asked is, how do you change this particular form, how can you ask more questions? So I'll show you how to do that within the client uh, and the general settings. You have a section for self-service wizards and one in here is called request support. So it's going to use this one by default. So the easiest way would be to add to this. So within the questions section, uh, I'm just going to add another quick uh, question here. Um, Please give there a message, something simple. Um, we'll do another uh, tutorial around the actual wizards and uh, handy ways and tips around up to use them. Uh, so I'm just going to use this as an example to add that. And then re log in again. Log a new incident. And you can see here, please give there a message is uh, there. Um, so other things you might want to think of in terms of these things is um, services. I know it's a massive section in terms of services. You obviously might want to get your CMDB and services uh, correct before going into that. Um, I'll 
I'll upload my uh, recommendations in terms of what you can do for that. Um, I'll do that in separate sessions. Also, some information around the notifications. Uh, so again, I'll do that in a separate video. But I hope this helps. Any questions, uh, please let me know.